ladies and welcome so much today. I'll tell you this is our Q&A day, but this also entails my big announcement. It's Sharon's 12 Days of Christmas giveaway. Yes, sir. I'm going to spend 12 solid days giving gifts every single day to my subscribers. I have just been going crazy. I have tons and tons. You know, I'm extra, and so I went overboard per usual. But this is how you're going to enter and how you can win tons of prizes. It's Sharon Capehart's 12 Days of Christmas Beauty Giveaway. This holiday season, we'll be giving away tons of beauty products from makeup and accessories to skincare and more. And we've got lots of ways for you to earn extra entries. To get started, just visit Sharon's website at SharonCapehart.com. You'll find the entry form right there. Enter starting Monday, November 19th through Saturday, December 1st. Sharon's 12 Days of Christmas Beauty Giveaways begins December 3rd, so enter today. Official rules, terms, and conditions and privacy policy available at SharonCapehart.com. No purchase necessary, void or prohibited. And so I'm just giving away tons of awesome gifts. I've gone overboard over this. I mean gifts like a whole complete gift set from Tasha Skincare. Giving away bottles of perfume from Skylar Perfumes. Like giving away all kinds of makeup palettes. And we can go on and on and so on. So enter right now on my website at SharonKPart.com. Fill out the entry form. There are tons of ways that you'll be able to receive extra entries. And I will start announcing winners on December the 3rd. Good luck to each and every one of you. So now let's go to my Q&A. For those of you that are new to my channel, go ahead and scroll on down and see that subscribe button. Click that button. That way you'll be a member of my tribe. See the little bell next to it? Hit that bell and it'll notify you of all my upcoming videos. I generally film on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And welcome to all of you. Okay, this is our Q&A day, so I got the answer to all your questions. First question. Dear Sharon, this is Sandy. I'm ready to jump into the medical grade train. Oh, girlfriend, where do I start? <laughs> Which video do you start from the beginning of your medical grade venture? Choo-choo, all aboard. <laughs> Thank you, Tahoe Gal Sandy. Okay, Sandy, we're not going to do all this all at one time. With medical grade, you've got to do it step by step till you get used to some of the products then you can add more. First thing, if you're not on Retin-A now, girl, you need to be, okay? So you want to start your Retin-A. That you can go ahead and do. The first product I would start you out is SkinCeuticals Vitamin C with Ferulic Acid. Now we're going to use that for a couple of months with your Retin-A and anything else you're using then I will add another product onto that and then another product. Do you see what I'm saying? We're going to do one new product at a time until your skin gets used to it. Because it takes three to four months for anybody to get used to skin care. But you don't want to do it all at once because you want to get the reaction and the effect of each and every product. Okay? That's how we're going to start, girlfriend. Keep me posted. The next question we have is from Iris. Hang on, Iris. I gotta get my specs on now, okay? Okay, it says, Hi, Sharon. Just love your videos as always. Thank you, sweetheart. It says, I will be turning 60 this December. Yay, girl! And I haven't worn makeup for years because of my oily skin. I need a good tutorial on makeup for oily skin from primer to finishing powder, and I would greatly appreciate it. Okay, Iris. I grew up with the oiliest possible skin of the universe. I mean, I had to have dry eyes and acetone treatments try to dry out my skin. I would wake up in the mornings, I would just be beaded up with oil, and I'd just literally slide out of bed. That's why I had acne problems. But let me tell you something. It's like my dermatologist told me when I was young. You are going to be so blessed. And thank God every day of your life that you had oily skin as a kid because your skin is going to be a lot younger looking than other gals your age that didn't have oily skin. And do you know what? 
I mean to tell you that has helped me a lot. My skin is somewhat dry, but it's not like uber dry anymore because it's all kind of, you know, your skin keeps changing every so many years. And right now with what I'm using, it's good to go. So honey, oily skin is not that difficult. For one thing, uh, the regime is going to be about the same if we are talking about skin care. There's not a lot of difference. I'm talking medical grade now. I'm not talking your run-of-the-mill drugstore. I'm talking medical grade. There's just a couple of things that would change there. But I would make sure I'm on a good vitamin C, obviously. You want to make sure you're on, at 60, you need to be on Retin-A. All right, hopefully you're at least at, if, if not, you know, 0.01%, at least you should be at 0.05. So you, you make sure you're there, okay? And let me know so I can kind of advise you where to go from there. As far as makeup, let me tell you something. There is so much makeup out there that is just perfect for oily skin. One thing let me recommend is Estee Lauder Double Wear. I think that's some of the, I, I think Estee Lauder Foundation is fantastic. I mean, there's a, there's others out there I do love, don't get me wrong, but I am crazy about Estee Lauder. The double wear is fantastic for you gals with oily skin. Now, the um, Estee Lauder uh, Perfectionist Radiance is fabulous for us dry skin gals. See what I'm saying? That's where you need to start. As far as setting powders, the uh, setting powders that I would use would be Hourglass Veil. That is perfect, especially with, with uh, oily skin. And for your under eye powder, use the By Terry Hydra Hyaluronic powder under your eyes. Girlfriend, that's going to make all the difference in the world. But if you want anything else, uh, let me know and we'll just go down the list and have a consultation and figure out what all you need, okay? But you got to wear makeup, girlfriend. That's going to, you're going to have a mess on your face. You have to have something that covers it up. You've got to have sunscreen. You've got to have products that cancel out all the radicals and everything or you're going to have a mess on your hands, honey, okay? I can tell you that. Okay, my love. Now let's go down the line and let's tease Warren. I hope I'm saying that right, baby girl. Okay, it says, what determines medical grade? And where can it be purchased? What brands are a sure bet? I just saw the, your passionate video on how cosmetic industry dupes us. Very good job, beautiful, smart, Virgo friend, stay gorgeous. Thank you, sweetheart. Okay, first of all, if you watch my channel, all I do is beat the drum on medical grade. Almost every skincare video is about medical grade. There's also um, the four main medical grade products to start with, and I have a video on that, so you might want to check the playlist. But uh, I can, let me tell you the difference, and I also did a video on what is the difference between medical grade and OTC, which is over the counter, okay? Medical grade is just like it sounds, medical grade. It goes past the epidermis to the dermis and the lower areas. It is the only, only skin care that penetrates the top of the skin and goes to the other layers to build up collagen and elastin. Nothing that just sits on the surface of your skin will do that. So you're not building up collagen, you're not building up elastin when you just put stuff on top of your epidermis, correct? You've got to have something to go down in there and feed it. You've got to have the peptides, you've got to have the growth factors, you've got to have all medical grade to go down and build up collagen and elastin. Or you're going to be one saggy mess and you, you, you'll be there quickly. It doesn't take long, I can tell you. Hello. That is the difference in medical grade. The next difference in medical grade is it can only be sold and dispensed by a doctor or a medical spa. Anything else is not medical grade. There you go, girlfriend. Bottom line, point blank. I wear all medical grade. I can tell you that. You need any more information on that, let me know, but I'll tell you, you won't be sorry. It makes all the difference in your skin. I am 70 years old. I turned 70 in September. 
I was using medical grade, you know, before then. But let me tell you something. There is nothing better. I, I would look 15, 20, probably 20 years older than I do now if, if I didn't have the medical grade. Because right after menopause, boom, that's when your nightmare starts hitting, girls, okay? Everything about your skin dries out. It starts changing. It starts dropping. You lose more collagen and elastin than you ever have before during menopause and after. I mean, unless, of course, you're taking hormones. I did take hormones. That helped somewhat. But I'm here to tell you, girlfriends, not everybody does take hormones. Some of them just suffer through the whole ball of wax. God love you. But I can tell you right now, if you don't start taking care of that skin with the best of the best of the best, it's going to be too late. I mean, you can't, let's say if I started using medical grade at 70, or if I started in my 60s, it would, it would be, it would be a little late. I'm not saying it wouldn't make some difference. Of course it would make some, but it wouldn't make the difference that it's made by starting, you know, the lickety split right after menopause with that, because I'm telling you, that saved my butt. But that, my lady, is the difference. Yes, it's pricey, but that it isn't pricey. Let me explain something to you. I can go and pick all this stuff up in the drugstore, and I can spend about $300, okay, every, you know, every time, which is which no more than what they have in the bottles wouldn't last me very long, wouldn't even last me a month. Okay, I can use medical grade. And one medical grade product lasts almost six months because you use such a minuscule amount of medical grade. That's the beautiful part because it goes so far. I use more Retin-A than I use anything, not other medical grade. It doesn't take anything but a squirt. So actually, I save money and I get the potent stuff. All right, so that's it, my lady. Thank you for your question, sweetheart. I appreciate it. Okay, this is from Lynn. I have always had oily skin, and I still think I have oily skin. I have huge pores, but my foundation at the end of the day looks patchy. I cannot find a primer that will smooth out my pores. Can you suggest something? Oh, Lynn, you're talking to the queen of the primers for pores. Listen, see, I had oily skin my whole life, too, like I had just said in another question and I have huge pores huge now they look smaller because I exfoliate like <laughs> there's no tomorrow to keep them debunked that's the important thing the next thing is a silicone primer is the only thing that can fill up pores in your skin I will swear by this till the day I croak Smashbox Silicone Primer is the best of the best of the best. I mean, I just squirt a pea-sized amount out, rub it around a little bit, and I press. I press all into all, everywhere where I've got pores. Even in my lines, my nasal lobia lines, my L's, everything. And I press, 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 and then I bring the rest of it down. Uh, even on my neck, and it fills in lines and wrinkles and pores. It is the best product I have ever used. There is no product to me that compares to a silicone product, especially if you have big pores. Uh, no, other, no other line. Believe me, I've tried them all. That is the best of the best. So, girlfriend, you can get it out there. You can get some four. Just run a walk, and that will take care of all your issues. But, of course, keep your exfoliation up, you know, because it makes your pores look a lot smaller because it's gotten all, they've debunked all the sebum and garbage in your pores, okay? All right, girlfriend. Thank you, sweetheart. Appreciate it, Lynn. Okay, dear Sharon, this is Margaret. Love the finished look and great tips of your last Get Ready With Me. Would love if you would advise what tinted moisturizer, BB or CC cream, I can use on my dry, mature skin. As I sometimes want a nice, sheer look on my face instead of a full foundation. Girlfriend, I detest BB and CC creams. I do. I detest them. I never use them. I can't even see why you would. Um, I cannot recommend the IT. 
CC cream to you because it's thick. It's it's thicker than even the foundations that I wear, so I'm, I can't do that. Uh, and I won't, and I'm not that crazy about the product. Any BB or CC cream I have ever tried never did the trick, but I can tell you a beautiful sheer foundation that just is stunning. Well, actually, there are two. The first one is Chanel, and it's the Lumiere Velvet, and it comes in a little black um, container from Chanel. It is soft and pretty and sheer and leaves your skin looking like velvet. It's beautiful. The next thing that I would recommend, and believe it or not, as far as foundation, is Armani. Armani that Armani silk is more is more sheer than anything. Now, I, I don't care for me for Armani because I like a heavier makeup myself. But I have the Armani, and I don't really wear it that much because it's too sheer for me, bottom line. Even when I try to build it up, it's too sheer. But it is gorgeous. It is, it is a beautiful sheer foundation. Let me tell you something. If you want something pretty, don't do a BB or really CC cream. I mean, just just find a nice foundation that is actually going to kind of stay on your face. Do you see what I mean? Through the day. Just go for a more, you know, a more sheer look. That's all you have to do. But either one of those would be absolutely beautiful and a little pricey. But you know what? Anything else that's kind of cheap like that is... It, mm -mm. Mm -mm. And the texture of it does not look good on a mature woman. I've never seen a uh, good looking texture in a BB or CC cream myself. Alright? Just don't like them. Sorry, girlfriend. Okay. Now, this is from Jasmine. Jasmine, hey, I really find your videos very helpful. Thank you. I'm so glad you do. Thank you for these informative videos. However, recently, I have read many articles stating that Retin-A can cause hair loss. What are your thoughts on this? Your reply would be very helpful. Okay, there have been articles and articles and people saying all the time that that's how they lost their hair loss. I do believe it can happen if you're taking uh, Accutane or a Retin-A type of a pill orally. Um, I do think that a vitamin D deficiency obviously can uh, have some hair loss because I have lost some because I'm vitamin D deficient. B12 deficient. If you have a thyroid issue, okay, you're going to lose some hair. I got a thyroid issue too. So th there is such things as hair loss that way. I have been using retin -A for a long time. I have never, what you call, have major hair loss at all. Um, and I really don't think, according to my, you'll hear different doctors' opinions on that. Some will say, no, only if you take it orally in a pill form. Some will say, well, yeah, you might. And then some say, no, that's ridiculous. So I can't really tell you. What I would tell you to do, though, because they're so, it, 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 it's just so mixed. And I can only tell you what I have experienced, obviously. But I will tell you this. Talk to your doctor. And the one I would talk to would be your dermatologist is who I would talk to. Now, I, I think it can it, sometimes uh, Retin-A, I've heard, can dry out your scalp and leave it a little flaky, you know. But that's at the scalp, and we don't usually apply Retin-A to the scalp so. See what I'm saying? Everything's kind of mixed. Talk, talk to your dermatologist and see what they say to you. But I can tell you, I have never, never had any hair loss from that. Mm -mm. Not a... I haven't had much hair loss at all. But when I do, it was from my vitamin D deficiency that they, you know, obviously correct, you know, with medicine. And my thyroid has been controlled by medicine as well. So, oh no, girlfriend, I've heard both. I have heard both of those. Good luck to you. Thanks for your question. That was really interesting, and I appreciate it. Okay. Last but not least, my angel babies. Okay, this is from Marilyn. Deal Sharon. With the holidays approaching, there is some bad blood in our family, 
and I don't know if we'll be able to get together for Christmas. How in the world do you put the past behind you and go forward with all that has happened in the past that has been negative and hurtful? Okay. Girlfriends grow up time, okay? And I mean that, you know, all families are going to bicker back and forth. The, everybody's going to get hurt sometime in their life, whether it be in the family, you know, whether it be with friends, uh, kids, whatever. You know, this is what I've found in life. You can't carry around grudges all your life. You have to get to the point where you kind of have to say to yourself, you know what, I'm big enough I can forgive these people for whatever they've done. It's like you have to let the anger go. You just have to release it and let it go. Because it's only going to fester and fester and grow and grow. And you, I guarantee it's not going to bother them. You know, nobody's going to be worrying about you like you're probably worried about them. And you've got to really practice your gratitude, you know. You've got to be thankful for what you have. You're thankful for your family. Thankful for those that, you know, even pissed you off, so to speak. Okay, just be thankful. The more gratitude, the more love comes in your heart, and it's easier to forgive, if you know what I'm saying. You know, your thoughts determine your reality. If you have negative thoughts, that's kind of what's going to be happening for the rest of your life. Negative thoughts bring on negative situations, negative talk, everything negative. You don't want that in your life. So you just want to release that. You want to let it go. Life is just too short. And you know, you've got to kind of sit there and you've got to say to yourself, you know, I'm a pretty awesome person. I'm really awesome. I'm, I'm going to be the forgiving one. I'm going to let all this go and God love me. I'm, hey, I'm the grand dame here. I am going to love me enough to forgive everybody and let's carry on and have a good time because maybe if you get this started you're going to have the most fabulous holiday ever. You're going to find that it's going to smooth everything out. Just let the caca go. Release it. Let it go. You don't need that in your life. You just don't need it. That is what I would say to you. I think by asking this question to me how can you let it go? Those are the ways you can let it all go. And you know what? Like I said, be the one. Be the head of that family that can bring everybody get together in forgiveness. And just love each and every one while they're there. It's going to make you feel ten times better. And I'll bet you anything you'll see a change in your family, okay? Trust me, works every time, all right? Thanks so much, my ladies, for all the fuss and juicing. You know I just love each and every one of you to pieces. Mwah, mwah, mwah to all my new subbies. I just love you. Now, remember, you guys need to enter the contest now. So scroll on down, click on that link, SharonKPart.com, and be sure you're a subscriber now. And then sign the entry form that we have for the contest. I want each and every one of you to stay sassy, classy confident and give me a big thumbs up on this video.